A common pattern in serverless applications is to invoke a Lambda function in response to an event from Amazon S3. For example, you could use this pattern for automating document translation or transcribing audio files or staging data imports. You can configure this integration in many places, including the AWS Management Console, the CLI, and also the AWS Serverless Application Model. If you need to fan out notifications or hold messages in a queue, you can route S3 events to SNS or SQS. These standard notification mechanisms work well for most applications and are fairly simple to implement. But for more complex notification patterns, you can use Amazon EventBridge to route events dynamically. EventBridge consumes S3 events via AWS CloudTrail. A single trail can log events for one or more S3 buckets, and you can configure which data events are recorded. There are a couple of useful benefits to using the S3 to EventBridge integration. You can subscribe to events for multiple buckets and route these to the same targets, such as a single Lambda function. You can also have rules with overlapping subscriptions, which is not possible in the direct integration between S3 and Lambda. You can also subscribe to events for buckets that may not exist yet based upon patterns. In this demo, I'll show you how to build this EventBridge to S3 integration via AWS CloudTrail. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new bucket in S3. So from the S3 console, I click on Create Bucket. I'm going to give this a name, S3 to EventBridge, and then just my handle. I need to make sure this is in the region where the trail is created and where I want to use the EventBridge rule. So I'm using Ohio, US East 2. I'll select all the other defaults just be, leave those as, as they are and click create bucket. So that's the bucket we're going to put objects in and then pick up the events into EventBridge. Now currently if we were to put anything in that bucket, nothing will happen because we haven't yet configured CloudTrail. So next I'll go to CloudTrail and create a trail. Again, we're in Ohio, US East 2, so that's the correct region. I'll give the trail the same name as the bucket. We'll optionally have that all the logs stored in a new S3 bucket. I'll leave that as the default. For simplicity, I'm going to turn off encryption here, but you should enable that in production workloads. And then click on Next. Now, CloudTrail can log both management and data events. For this demo, I just want to pick up data events. So I'm going to select data there. And instead of logging all of the S3 buckets, I'm going to just pick the one that we just created. In many cases, you may want to just log write events to the bucket if you want to pick up when new objects are created. But for, to show you the sorts of events that will be created, I'll select both read and write in this demo. Now, okay, I'll click Next, review those settings, and then create the trail. So at this point, anything that happens in, the, in terms of data events in that bucket will be logged in, in CloudTrail, and that will automatically be routed to the EventBridge service. So the next step is to create a rule. So I go to rules in the EventBridge console. All AWS events go to the default event bus. So I have to create a rule on the default bus. I'll create the rule with the same name and then choose an event pattern based upon a service. I'm going to select AWS and then S3 just down here, a simple storage service. And I'll choose all events. Now, optionally, you want to scope down this event pattern, maybe for certain types of event, but just for the sake of showing what sorts of events get, get matched, I'm going to choose a fairly broad pattern here. I'll log this out to a CloudWatch log group so we can see what events are matching and give the log group the same name as the bucket. And finally, just create. So at this point, I'll click the rule. And this will show us the configured rule. I'll open the target, which is the CloudWatch log group. And here you can see there's an empty log group with no events logged yet, which is what we'd expect to see. Back in the S3 console, I'll open up this bucket. And next I'll upload an image from my local machine, just a small image so we can create an object in this bucket. And upload that to the S3 bucket. And so now you can see the S3 bucket contains this one object. Back over in CloudWatch logs, we can now see, if I refresh, three separate events that have happened. 
So when you have this type of integration, you get more events than you would typically get with a direct integration between S3 and Lambda, for example. And so you may want to use some of those events, or you may want to filter down just to uh, put object events, for example. But if I look at the three events, what you'll see is that one of these is the put object event just there. And that contains all the information that you would typically associate with an S3 event. Whereas a couple of the others give you for example, this is the pre-flight request before the object was uploaded. And then this one here is list object versions. So you may not care about some of these events. You may prefer to only filter on the put object event. But using this type of integration gives you access to a broad range of different events. I've created a, a GitHub repo that has some SAM examples you can use if you want to deploy more complex examples or integrate this into your own code. And you can reach that by going to s12d.com forward slash events 13. For links to the resources shown in this video, visit s12d.com forward slash about events.